And good afternoon. My name is Randy Price. We are the Price Group, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our April monthly market update. We're uh, trying, as usual, to give you some uh, information that's helpful, but it's information that is also uh, uh, relevant to where you are, what you're doing, and uh, will help you better understand your investments. And as we go forward on the slides, there we go. Who are we? We are a family owned and operated business, 50 plus years of experience. Important thing for, uh, we think of the whole slide here is we do follow a fiduciary standard. And uh, if you're retired or retiring soon, over 83% of our clients are in, uh, in that area. And that's what we do Monday through Friday. Thank you, Randy. A um, little bit about our team here. Randy, won't, he's too humble, won't brag on himself, been recognized by Barron's and Financial Times, also Forbes. Uh, recently, he was just named to the best in-state wealth advisor list for 2024, the fifth time in the last six years. So um, proud of, of Randy there. Randy, Matt, and myself, uh, are all CFP professional certified financial planners. Randy and Matt also hold their SEMA as certified investment management analysts. Um, and so we think it's important to, to have those designations. And a little bit about our firm, Steward Partners, based on the biblical definition of stewardship, over 30 billion in assets as of the end of last year. I think the important word there is fiduciary, operates as a fiduciary for all of our clients. Uh, you'll see the Raymond James there, our prim primary custodian um, on the S&P 500 index. Clients have given us good feedback um, on the statements and online access, and they've been a great, great partner of ours. So where is the economy? And that's sort of the uh, uh, idea for uh, for this week's summary, the consumer has and continues to be the driver of the economy. And as you see there, despite the risk, uh, the consumer is relatively healthy and, uh, and is uh, consumer's actions supportive of growth, which uh, is uh, for some people somewhat surprising. 60% of consumers do not carry any credit card debt, uh, but we've got record net worth, healthy job market, uh, positive um, wages in places, and uh, select interest rate insulation, uh, sort of an interesting statistic there, 75% of homeowners have a mortgage that's 4% or less. That's uh, one of the things that's really putting a little bit of uh, the brakes on the economy is uh, people not able to, uh, to sell and to move up or to even move laterally without uh, having to spend a whole lot more money. But the consumer uh, is relatively healthy. Further uh, headwinds on the uh, horizon. Uh, you've got uh, delayed spending from the fiscal package uh, to continue. Uh, thing that uh, makes sense, a fact that makes sense, the uh, artificial intelligence boost and also defense spending should, uh, should help the economic ex expansion also continue. So we don't expect a collapse um, there still may be a, a mild recession. The economy is definitely uh, going to slow, in our opinion, but may be able to skirt a recession potentially. Um, Raymond James, again, they're economists, ones that we follow and track, um, have a 2.1% GDP forecast for the rest of this year. So, um, again, if there's a recession, we may barely feel it. Um, and Manny, it's good to point out uh, the problem with the recession is our recession and de depression are close together. All a recession is is two straight three month periods where the economy doesn't grow. If the economy just shrinks just a little bit, you probably wouldn't know it unless someone told you it's the times like 2008 or like COVID where the economy really takes a tumble that a recession can get a bad name. But uh, all in all, a recession for many people, you wouldn't even uh, even know about it. We may not may not even get there. Um, regardless, we do believe the Fed will cut rates in 2024. Um, 
with the economy slowing, but not collapsing, again, maybe not even noticeable, like Randy was talking about, the Fed really does have an opportunity um, to do something that most Feds don't have the ability to do. Maybe they maybe they have the ability to deliver the soft landing, potentially. Um, we think that they're going to cut maybe as an insurance policy, just to make sure the economy doesn't slow too much. And you may hear a lot of chatter out there. So you see these headlines over here about why the Fed won't be able to cut rates. But when you look at those comments uh, in line with their past actions, you'll see that sometimes they're, they may be unfounded. In particular, inflation, while it's still above 2%, they can't cut rates. Well, the Fed cut while inflation was 2% in eight of the last nine cut cycles. It's an election year. They can't cut rates. The Fed's cut rates in 85% of election years. So we still do think um, that the Fed will cut rates. If you know how many times, we'd love to love to hire you. Um, but and when we they do, do hope the Fed knows what they're doing. <laughs> that's right. We say don't fight the Fed. Um, so with when they cut rates, what does that mean for money market accounts? I know a lot of our clients have been enjoying north of 5% yields on their money market accounts. Those rates are likely to come down since they move very closely with the Fed funds rate. Um, but since they're going to be bringing the, the fund rate down slowly, cash, cash yields should remain over 4% by the end of the year. Um, so while cash is not an investment, uh, it's not necessarily a bad place and we're not in a rush necessarily. Um, it's not an emergency in terms of getting that cash invested. So if you're an investor and you have cash, uh, you are enjoying the cash yields on the money markets, but uh, you're also enjoying what some of the longer term fixed income a uh, tax-free bond, a taxable bond, a government bond, a uh, mortgage bond, et cetera. Uh, and we can see there where things are in a 15-year range. The current is the uh, the little uh, diamond and then the average. And so we can see high-yield bonds are above average. We can see emerging market rates are above average, investment-grade bonds are above average, so on and so forth. And then the, the, the chart on the right shows you that these uh, are some of the highest coupon payments since 2016, uh, eight years seems uh, seems like a long time, and it is, but uh, truly, it's much easier to live when interest rates are higher and you, you're clipping coupons than when rates were, were low or even uh, non-existent uh, back during some of the, uh, the recent periods of time. Looking here at the 10-year treasury total return versus the average total return. Uh, green is current, uh, the uh, light blue is average, and you can see here that as in interest rates uh, rise, the treasuries will, or any bond, uh, will operate like a seesaw, interest rates up, uh, uh, bond prices down. And so uh, higher interest rates are initially tough because they cause uh, negative returns to your bond portfolio, but they can work out uh, well over time, again, to lock in some returns for a longer period of time. So here we would uh, we would look at the economy as the biggest predictor of the election, 2024, an election year. Everybody knows that. A recession within two years of the election has typically been the deciding factor in past elections, but uh, this year could be a little bit different because there seems to be a major disconnect between some of the economic numbers and the perception of the economy. And so, uh, therefore, the economy will be a big item on the campaign trail. And uh, some of the predictions that uh, have been, uh, the accuracy of some of the predictions in the past may not be as accurate uh, for this year for, for that reason, the worry about many of the things going on in the economy that worries uh, people, most notably inflation, things costing more, going to the grocery store, buying eggs, going to eat out, uh, uh, we mentioned housing and the price of mortgages, et cetera, all can uh, weigh on the consumer. Another thing that is a solid predictor of the election outcome is the performance of the stock market. Uh, the fourth year of the election cycle, uh, the year that we are in is usually a positive for the, uh, for the equity market. Um, on, uh, on average, uh, the S&P is up about uh, 10%. 
during this 83% uh, of the time. But uh, in the last three months leading up to the election, the, the equity market has predicted 20 out of the last 24 elections. But uh, um, if the S&P is up in that three-month uh, three period, typically the incumbent wins. If it's lower, the challenger wins. So again, we'll see if that holds true uh, in this election cycle, 2024. And here we go, the S&P 500, the 500 largest stocks versus the average total returns uh, from 1928 through 1924. As you, uh, as you look there, uh, the, uh, the average for the 20 years is a little bit below. The, uh, the light blue average uh, 10 year, we're a little bit above. And uh, obviously these things ebb and flow, but uh, that's a look at the uh, stock market over a short, medium and long-term period. Here we're looking at uh, the S&P 500 largest stocks performance after one year total return of 30%. We had a good year last year. You remember in 2022, the market stumbled, the Dow Jones Industrial, excuse, excuse me, the uh, S&P uh, was down 18% in 2022, rallied strong in 2023 last year. And so some people say after a great year, can the market really go higher after it's had the uh, the wonderful year in 2023. And uh, what we see is uh, that uh, it can and can go higher with regards to a post 30% performance uh, on that and uh, remains to be seen how 2024 will turn out. But we are positive and it looks uh, fairly good so far uh, through, uh, through almost four months. We do expect um, some volatility and even some pullbacks one of the main reasons is time. Prior to essentially last week, we had a pullback last week, um, but we had gone six months. So since October of 2023, without a pullback of 5% or more, double the length of time on average that we experience a pullback. So um, we did experience that last week, but more fund fundamentally, um, the S&P 500 is trading over its 200 day moving average. And April and May are volatile months, so we do expect more volatility ahead. One interesting um, statistic or area to look at is the percentage of investors expecting a rise in equity prices. So um, consumer sentiment, investor sentiment right now, it's it's at near record levels. And usually when investor sentiment is over 45 percent positive, the S&P 500 is range bound, kind of trades sideways, if not down. And so. Um, a lot of times we use retail investor sentiment as a contrarian indicator uh, to become a little bit more cautious. But while we do expect a pullback, like Randy said, we remain optimistic longer term. Um, this bull market we're in by magnitude, at this point in the bull market, we're at a 47% return, while on average of our recent bull markets, the average is at 50% at this time. We're only a year and a half into this bull market, while on average bull markets last five and a half years. So by that metric, there's still room to run, but more fundamentally, earnings do continue to move higher. We talked about our economic outlook. There is still positive growth potential for the economy. There's lots of cash on the sidelines, $6 million in money market accounts that um, in theory will be invested back into the market. And as interest rates do move lower, that will increase the attractiveness of equities long-term. So we, we do remain optimistic long-term. So should you invest in the uh, U.S. market or should you invest overseas? Uh, we get asked that quest, question quite a bit, and uh, our portfolios have been predominantly uh, way over allocated uh, to domestic stocks. Our thoughts are that... Uh, you can own companies that do business overseas and 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 get less volatility and not have to worry about the uh, currency conversion, et cetera. But the we think the economic and also the earning fundamentals continue to support the United States uh, market in 2024, stronger growth, more res resilient revisions, and the sector weightings uh, favor the U.S. over inter international Um that's not to say that at some point, uh, international um, uh, measured by the what they referred to as the EFI will be a good place to be. Uh, right now, uh, each of these, uh, you can make cases that each of these 
uh, uh, if you will, two different markets have their issues. Right now, we just think that the uh, United States market is the cleanest shirt in the uh, in the dirty laundry. Uh, but uh, the sectors we favor the most have uh, have the largest exposure uh, in the United States. And again, we're sticking with um, our allocations as they as they are. So in summary, um, inflation is sticky. That's probably the most difficult question Maddie, Matt, and I get asked on a uh, regular basis is what about inflation? Uh, people going again to the grocery store, they're seeing prices. Uh, we think rates could be higher than uh, higher for longer than expected. Uh, if so, uh, that's good for your interest rates. Um, we think the economic expansion continues. Uh, we continue to uh, talk about beware of irrational exuberance. Uh, you've probably heard, if you picked up uh, any sort of financial publication or newspaper, heard about the Magnificent Seven. No, that's not a new TV show. That's the seven largest stocks that last year, 2023, were up about 100%. And uh, so uh, do you put money in stocks typically uh, in stocks that have been up 100%, typically, uh, it's not a kiss of death, but at some point, uh, the law of large numbers catches up. So beware of irrational exuberance. Uh, Maddie talked a little bit about cash is not an investment. Cash is a great parking lot, uh, getting five plus percent on, uh, on money market and having great safety and liquidity is something our clients are enjoying. But at some point, when the Fed decides to cut interest rates, rates could drop rather quickly and that 5% money market could turn into 3% money market. How do you hedge that? Well, what you do is you don't wait until the Fed is signaling that they're gonna cut interest rates because interest rates can change very quickly, but uh, there is some real value into layering in dollar cost averaging in or, or gradually taking a position in something longer than just a short-term money market. The short money market typically is about a 20-day mutual fund when you boil it all down. And so uh, again, cash is not an investment, but fixed income, point number five, can be a ballast uh, just as the ship, keep it uh, grounded and not uh, rocking side to side and can be more attractive. Uh, just as we've seen some negative returns in bond markets uh, as interest rates have risen, the 10-year treasury got to about 5%. It dropped back to about 3.8. It's back to about 4.6 now. Uh, fixed, income, fixed income could be really attractive, especially if the economy would get worse than expected, especially if there would be some continued uh, really severe geopolitical tensions uh, leading to some sort of armed conflict. Typically, the, risks, the risk trade is off. People run for safety. They bid up the prices of bonds and your fixed income to do very well. On top of that, most of our clients are retired. They're looking for income. And so uh, bullet point number six, income, income, income. We like uh, dividend paying stocks, a couple of different flavors of, uh, of those kind of stocks. And so nights, weekends, and holidays, you're getting paid, you're earning money. If indeed uh, we're doing our job right, we get a dividend increase on a regular basis and uh, you get to offset some of the inflation by some of the, uh, the dividend increases. Uh, but um, we think that's one of the secret sauces of the price group. And uh, finally, the foundation, of everything we do, planning and our investment process are the keys to a su successful retirement. Um, you'll find some people out there that, uh, that basically are saying hope. We hope this does well or whatever. This is a repeatable process, investing in dividend stocks, making allocations in various fixed income sectors, never taking any big bets, but uh, always having a rhyme and a reason for what's, uh, for what's going on, us being transparent as a fiduciary in doing this. And uh, it's worked well for many, many years here at, the, here at the Price Group. So with that, we thank you for your time. Um, we always get uh, a request for uh, the, the slides. And if so, we can make those available for you. Please feel to reach out with any uh, questions or comments. Uh, that's Tiffany, that's Matt, myself. Maddie and, uh, and Melissa by email or uh, by phone. And uh, our goal is to make sure you have relevant information as well as information that is uh, understandable and will make a difference in, uh, in your financial dealings. So 
with that, uh, happy uh, happy Wednesday. Thanks for your time this afternoon. Look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you in May for the uh, the price group market update. Bye bye.